40 years after the event that marked the rise of the environmental justice movement with a landfill in rural Warren County, landfills remain a concern for environmental quality. Charles City happened to be majority black. We happen to be, according to the state census reports, we're, we're at a lower income area and we're rural. Like, dang, we fit all three categories. This was not an opportunity that Charles City presented to itself. We were picked for a reason and we fit the bill of where these things are located. We worked with grassroots organization C5 to learn more about how Virginia's first mega landfill is impacting its neighbors and how capacity is being built through community organizing, education, and data collection to determine next steps. I'm Pastor F. Wayne Henley. I'm the senior pastor of the Cedar Grove Baptist Church, concerned citizens of Charles City County, um, C5 for short, organized here at the church. Um, we had some concerns of some pending gas plants. We already have a landfill. With a landfill and two gas plants, we believed the gases and all the pollution will be hazardous to the residents of Charles City County. So let me give you some history on the landfill. In 1990, we had one of the worst physical school buildings in the state. So one of the developmental things that they offered was that they would provide a new school structure for us as well as giving us revenue from the landfill, from the tipping fees. Now that the landfill is operational, a lot of the things that happen at the landfill we don't really know about unless you request them through DEQ. So the emissions, the off-gassing, um, there's the off-gassing facility that's now there as well to capture the methane. And Jenko, a landfill gas waste energy facility claiming to be 100% renewable, ultimately pollutes the air and incentivizes an increase in waste going into the landfill. Not only has Njenko recently received permission to increase their pollutant emissions, but in 2020, the landfill proposed to expand with 16 new cells. And so as we started looking more into the expansion, we found out that there was a civil war battle that happened at the location of where the landfill actually sits. And there were United States Colored Troops that were involved at the Battle of Nance's Shop. That information was not available. If you are directly living in an impacted community, you should be able to get that information and have a direct connection to ask questions about things that are coming up, like the smells, the humidity, the smog. I have families that come down here from Richmond, a different place, and they go, what's that smell? I'm like, oh, it's a landfill. <laughs> State permits, while addressing the amount of pollutants emitted over time, do not track how pollutants are concentrating in the air and the humidity of Virginia summers. To ensure resident safety, Public air quality monitoring devices need to be placed in close proximity to the landfill and the Angenco facility. Monitoring air quality within this vicinity will provide more reliable data on the air directly in the area where emissions are of concern. Majority of this county has well water. Whatever is coming through the landfill, the leakage or whatever's going on with it, that's going into our water system. You have to prove that a mega landfill that's got documented records of leaching out into your community, out into your streams, out into the land, filtering down into the water that you're drinking. How do you prove they did it? I have a lot of members who live in close proximity, a mile or less, to the landfill. And I've buried a lot of my members from rare forms of cancer. I don't know if it's the landfill, but I believe and many of the County leaders said, well, you can't say that if a study hasn't been done, which is true. I, I agree with that. What I did was I met with the county administrator and I requested a study um, be done of the landfill so that we can be sure. Um, and it has fallen on deaf ears. No study has been done. We with C5 wanted to gauge community concerns of the landfill to take next steps. 2,500 postcards were sent out to addresses on file for Charles City, and 223 responses were received. This data indicates a pressing citizen concern towards a landfill for issues such as health impacts, impacts on wetlands and wildlife, truck traffic, methane and climate quality, historical preservation, and fairness of economic factors. The overwhelming majority of residents expressed concern regarding toxic substances leaching into the water. We with C5 are now organizing free water testing for residents, collecting and sampling water to test it for EPA levels for safe drinking water. 
we can just hope that it gains some type of traction that maybe, just maybe, uh, a study is done. And we can just enlighten the community, enlighten other areas that have proposed landfills. We have to come up with a better way. What if we would have, in 1999, went with a more sustainable landfill model where the trash was sorted and recycled and composted, and that way the footprint wouldn't be expanded in 30 years. And so I feel like environmental injustice is at a pivotal point. Charles City is an example of how community-driven initiatives are working to address environmental justice concerns. The EPA is moving in the right direction with its new methane policy for landfills. And yet, new policy must address not only climate, but also human health, toxicity impacts, and the strong need for transparency within these communities.